call this Explore Map. I think you can come up with a better title. I just have been too lazy to come up with it. Um, and it was actually inspired by this one, Thon Win. Um, and if you go to the next slide, I mean, nobody cares. Thon, <laughs> but um, she was inspired. So this is like a mid boss inspired thing. She was inspired by Math Munch. So if you don't know about Math Munch, Google it. It's a great newsletter. Um, and they just link to things that are accessible to kids who are interested in math or would find different things in math interesting, but not at a super high level. Um, and so she made an activity for her kids, quarter one, um, and they just had to pick something. Do something for Math Munch, make something, talk about Math Munch, watch, read, play, and that's all. Very low stakes, um, and her middle school kids love doing it. So I was inspired by that, and I started thinking about all the things that my kids um, asked me, like just randomly, like, why is zero factorial one, or what's zero to the zero, or I've heard about these fractal things, or can I make a fractal? How does one do that? There, like, is an investing club in my school? I don't know why, but anyway, so kids wanted to understand the stock market investing, um, Pythagoras. So I show them this slide, and I say, I get lots of amazing questions from you. And I often, not just sometimes, I feel very devastated that I just can't throw everything out and do whatever I want. Because in high school is a time when they actually can, like, where their interest in math and their love of math, <laughs> high school, middle school, lower school, whatever, it can just be developed. And we have all these things that we have to teach. Not that I don't like the law of signs, but there are other things that I think are really cool that never make it into the curriculum. And so this was like an inspiration from Fawn and what I wanted to do to like break out of that. So I just amassed a whole bunch of things um, from the interwebs that kids could go to and find interesting. Everything from Reddit, like the math subreddit, to um, the what if, I don't know if you've heard of that website, but it's the guy who does XKCD, and it's like, what if, you know, you what's the probability of answering all the SAT questions correctly by randomly guessing, but then it's like this long explanation with, uh, it's hilarious, and they have um, like extensions and all of that. Um, we have the Museum of Math in New York, so I was like, kids can visit the Museum of Math. But there's all these things that kids can do. Um, take math competitions, um, go to Math Munch. And so I like, amassed them all, and I said to them, you are going to subvert math class right now. And I just want you to love math. And I want it to be something you enjoy. So the point of all of what we're going to be doing is you're going to get rewarded if you find something fun and do it. So the key to this is, I think, totally the framing. It will not work unless you make it low stakes for kids and high reward. So all I did was I said, you're going to do four to five mini explorations. And I'll describe what they are and show some examples. But these mini explorations, I all together I counted as like half a test grade. And kids were like, OK, like basically if they do this stuff, they're going to get half a test grade, like 100%. So they were psyched about that. Um, I was nervous. The first year I did this, I didn't know what was going to happen. I presented it to the kids, um, and I thought maybe they would start phoning it in, see it as busy work. I don't know. Um, but I remember posting on Facebook, um, I got three emails this weekend from kids. One kid wants to read an article about um, a female mathematician. He also was super interested in architecture, and he knows an architect, so he wanted to interview an architect and find out how they use math. And I was like, he was asking me, are these okay things? I was like, absolutely. Of course, like, I'm not gonna say no to that. Um, and then another kid was just like trying to find something. Like, she didn't have this like deep interest in something specific. And so she just started like Googling and she random, randomly came across the um, Powers of 10 video, which I don't know if any of you have seen, but it's really um, incredible. And then she like wrote me an email saying like, it's so, so, so awesome. And it really makes you realize how tiny we are blah, 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 and so I just, I didn't know what was going to happen, but at least at this point, I was like, if the other 16 kids are like these kids, I'm going to be in heaven. Okay. So, um, I'm going to just show you um, the website I created after a year or two of doing this. Um, and this website has now codified from that horrible paper thing, and I just add to it, things that people can do. And so... Uh, just a quick, I mean, I'll just scroll down so you can see there's lots of things, especially things that you probably recognize, like which one doesn't belong. Um, so they can create their own. 
or solve a few of them and try to find some answers. I don't know if Edmund Harris is here, but um, Patterns of the Universe, like they could just do buy this coloring book, or I have a copy in my office, they can photocopy it and fill in the coloring and then just do a little like Googling of what the math is, like if it's a fractal thing or if it's something based on Fibonacci, you know? They just Google it. Um, they could listen to podcasts. They could write, like listen to a math poem and then write their own. Um, they could read about what mathematicians say about doing mathematics, um, do puzzles, play games. Kids love doing this. For some reason, this game about squares, if you haven't played it, it's just one of these things where it's like a logic puzzle type thing. But then kids, I had kids not only play it, but then make their own version, like make your own level, and then write the solution out. So it's very open. Um, read Paul Lockhart's A Mathematician's Lament. This is fascinating for kids who like aren't really satisfied with how math is being taught. They read this and then they like write a reflective screed about like how horrible the United States education math system is and how like this is the one exception. Like this project is like the counter example. And I was like, okay, so I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, by heart videos, um, movies, all these things, number file, um, reading articles from the New York Times. Anyway, so visual patterns. So tons of things are available for kids to work on. Um, and the one thing I do say is that they, those things that I give them are just guidelines, and I actually encourage them not to use them. I say, if there's something you're, you're interested in, anything at all, whether it's a question that you've always had about math, or an interest that you wonder how it intersects with math, go with those. And I just ask that they talk with me about it so I can give them additional information or help. I had a number of kids do like sports statistics. Of course, I would never put that on there because I don't like sports. But, I mean, it was like these kids who weren't so passionate about math, like the things that I got from them were not these mini explorations that I was expecting, but like these giant things because they became obsessed with them. Okay, so here's some examples. Just so we don't go over, I might go, I put a lot of them in to it, so um, I'll just talk really quickly. Um, a student watched a George Hart video, or maybe it's my Hart video, about how to create a dodecahedron out of using cards, and at every intersection was Jack, Queen, and King, and it's, they just were like, I want to make this. And I was like, cool, that counts, do it, okay? Um, another student wanted to learn about the Enigma machine because of a movie, their first uh, Explore Math mini project was a movie, like, and talking about the history of the Enigma machine. Second one, he's a programmer. I didn't know that, actually. I learned a lot about my kids from doing this. And so we wanted to write a, some code that would actually act like the Enigma machine. And it was cool because he wrote, like, a program that could do the encoding, but he couldn't write a program that would do the decoding. And so, like, you know, I was like, fine, that's fine. But later in the year, he did that, and then he ended up winning, like, the computer science prize at our school for doing that, because he got obsessed with it. Okay. Um, someone went to the Museum of Math, wrote a review on it. I mean, like, I didn't have to, like, take a field trip. Kids who wanted to go would go. Okay. Um, this student I had as an advisor this year and a student last year, extra bonus. This kid loves cooking and baking. And I didn't know that about her until she did that. She wants to own a restaurant one day. Um, so double bonus, she, like, interviewed someone at a restaurant to find out how the finances work. But in addition, she started bringing me all these pastries because she knew I liked eating pastries. <laughs> so there are extra bonuses. Um, I had a couple kids this year, and I think it's probably because one kid said they were doing it to the other kid, and then they just were like, that sounds cool. Um, counting cards. And they played, like, one kid, like, in his write-up was talking about how they played blackjack with their parents, like, at family event. And so they wanted to start winning more, and they started learning how to count cards. So, they, I mean, again, though, they didn't invent counting cards, like how to do it. They just went on a website, they're summarizing what they found, explaining it to someone else, and then they said their experience of doing it. But, I mean, some of these are quite more elaborate. Um, this was one from uh, Edmund Harris's book, and it was about non-periodic tiling. So the student, actually, I didn't have a scan of her work, but. Um, I just said also, like, Google what the math is, and so she learned about non-periodic tilings and Penrose kites and darts just from coloring and finding out what she was working on. Um, now, I put this in here because I wanted to show an example of, like, you know, a kid who's, like, just playing around and picking something from the set things, 
And this is the entirety of what she's heard, right? Um, she said she went on math month, she played four different games, she talked about her favorite game, she talked to like a sentence about each, um, and that was it. Like, I really enjoyed these games, no matter how frustrating mind bending, I think we should definitely compare entanglement scores and pre-calc. This to me is fine. It's more than fine, it's awesome. This is a kid who didn't love like everything we're doing. Sometimes, you know, she'd get frustrated because to other kids, things came to them quicker than to her, but she found this and she enjoyed doing it, and it's math. How am I gonna like say anything but the best things about this? Full credit, okay. This is a kid who went above and beyond. He somehow had found out about something called Sloan's Gap, which I didn't even know about. I have no idea what this thing was. And he went on to the online encyclopedia of inner integer sequences. Um, and this is just like one page of three pages. I mean, I was not expecting like a three page analysis of what this thing is. <laughs> but it's so cool that I got to learn stuff from what people were doing, not only about them, but about math. Um, another example of something very low stakes that kids could do, I said watch by heart videos, sometimes we watch them in class. And so this kid wrote, watched a by heart video and wrote a summary or a comment. I said like either post it on YouTube and copy it or just if you don't feel comfortable, write a comment. Right? This is cool. Kids are watching videos about math outside of math. Um, artist, I didn't know that she was an artist. She started with a checkerboard. We had just learned about Fibonacci and then she turned it into artwork. So we'll just skip some of these. Um, kids didn't find it busy work. I basically got all their responses and for the most part, it was pretty universally awesome. Um, just quick things to keep in mind. Keep it low stakes. Don't make it that they have to do a lot of important things. Keep it very open for them so that they can go in any direction they want. Keep the explorations mini. Don't expect giant things. Um, don't compare them. Once you start seeing amazing things, then you see like a kid who responds to a video, leave it. Like be like, that's awesome that this kid is doing math outside. Classroom, technical thing, you should probably have two different due dates for the four or five, like break it into two and three, um, just so they know. Like structure for them is helpful and they get some feedback. Make your life super easy. So for you, if you have to write narrative comments about kids, or write recommendations, or meet with parents for parent-teacher conferences. You have some really nice things to show them. And you can make it public by having kids present if they're interested, something that they're working on to turn in. We have this, my kids loved it so much that I just said, in the fourth quarter, if you wanna do one large exploration, I'll count it as like a quiz grade. They'll get 100 if they do it, and then they just talk with me, they come up with a proposal, and they write it, and we work together. But it's a way to get them into like what a big project will look like. So that's it, thank you.